the blood, the blood of Jesus. I bleed the blood, the blood of Jesus. I bleed. I bleed. I bleed the blood, the blood of Jesus. I bleed the blood, the blood of Jesus. I bleed. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. Sing with me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me. That he that sin the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater are you, Lord. Greater is he that is in me. Greater, greater. Greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. One more time. Greater are you, Lord. Greater is he that is in me. family thank you lord for businesses represented here we give you the praise thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you we thank you that we could rise early in this morning that we didn't sleep the sleep of death we thank you take all the glory take all the honor take all the adoration cause us celebrate you may it please you that we need the time that we have that life should not remain the same. We give you the praise. Let both the hearer and the speaker be catapulted to where they belong. In Jesus' precious name. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Please be seated. Love you right back. God bless you. I want to start reading from Genesis 50. Read from 15 to 21 because of time. The Bible says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, they commanded us saying, thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and, and their sins. For they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. And Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? Verse 20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, 
but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day and to save many people alive. Verse 21, now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. I've been sharing on forgiveness. And the reason I'm sharing on forgiveness is because if you forgive people, if you let go, you are doing yourself a favor. I've been a pastor for a while to know that you don't share things like this once and expect to, to see results in people's lives. Someone asked me many years ago, what are strong goals? I said, things that hold you strong. In fact, the first time the message is preached, you may not know they're talking to you until you search your heart very well. You may think, well, in my heart, I've forgiven the person, but you may not know until you search your heart very well. You need to let go and let God. Let me tap your neighbor and say, let go and let God. Joseph said something that I love to dwell on today before I move forward. He said, am I in the place of God? In other words, forgiveness belongs to God. He says, vengeance is mine. Am I in the place of God? In other words, if you refuse to forgive people, you are taking the place of God in people's lives. Because you yourself need forgiveness. In Mark 11, I want to start reading from 23. Mark 11, 23. He said, for as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, so there was a mountain. You know the background story out that Jesus spoke to a tree and the tree dried. The tree dried from the root. And when Jesus was speaking to the tree, they had kept quiet thinking, what is our God doing? <laughs> he has spoken to a baby, spoken to several people. Now he's speaking to a tree. And Jesus took it to a step further and said, if you shall say to a mountain, now a tree is a living thing. If it lives, it can die. Now I'm talking about non-living thing. In other words, if you say to this mountain, be removed. So there was a mountain actually Jesus Christ was speaking about. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And you don't doubt in your heart. Think about it. Things you pray about, things you use your faith to do. And you don't doubt in your heart. And you believe that the things you spoke will be done. And it's not done to you according to God's word. And he said, it's not a man that should lie or some a man that should repent. In verse 24, the Bible says in verse 24, Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you I tell when you prosuke, whatever you, you, you ask in the place of worship, believe that you will have them and you will have them. It's very plain. So why don't we have them? In verse 25, he explains, whenever you pray this kind of prayer, this prayer of demand, if you have anything against anyone, you must forgive them. That your Father in heaven may forgive you. So this kind of prayer is answered by mercy. Is answered by mercy. And if God is delaying having mercy on you, you also I've not had mercy on other people. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Ephesians 4, 32. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So if you receive forgiveness before, forgive means you don't need to pay the debt for ahead of time. You, something is given to you. If you don't need to repent, if you don't need to, uh, uh, to pay for what you've done. If somebody said, okay, I forgive you. If you received it, why can't you give someone else? In Luke chapter 6, verse 37, verse 36 says, Give it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? In verse 37, the Bible says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. There's nothing clear in the scripture than this. It means if you don't forgive, you'll not be forgiven. If you condemn, you'll be condemned. If you judge, you'll be judged. 
This is very clear. This is not, oh, Apostle Paul was speaking as a man, or oh, Peter was speaking. This is Jesus Christ speaking. <laughs> and the person speaking, the devil came to him and found no material of ease in him. The Bible says he was tempted at all points, yet without sin. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The theme of this year, reigning with Christ, will be a reality in your life. In the name of Jesus, what are you supposed to do? Before I tell you what you're supposed to do, I want, you, I want to tell you a story that Jesus Christ told in Matthew 18. Allow me to tell you from verse 23 to 35. Matthew 18, 23 to 25. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle account with the servants. Verse 24. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Please don't imagine singing or a gift. Imagine money. Because the weighed money in those, they called money. We call it Naira in Nigeria. In America, you call it dollars. Then they call it talent. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded him that he, he be sold. You not be sold. <laughs> with his wife, with his children, all, all that he had. And all that payment be made. God is a shrewd businessman. And the servant therefore fell down before his master. Notice he didn't stand, he didn't say, well, I want to continue that way. Paul says, shall we continue seeing and expect the grace to abound? The, the man fell down as a master. Have patience with me. I will pay you all. And in verse 27, then the master of that servant was moved with compassion. And he released him. What did he do? He released him and forgave him the debt. He only asked for a date to repay. But the master said, okay, I, I forgive you totally. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. Who owed him a hundred denarii? Now he owed 10,000 talents. Now a servant hold him hundred denarii. He laid hands on him and took him by his truth, saying, pay me what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me. I will pay you all. But study, he would not. He went and threw him into prison. See, people that offended you, you have a right to deal with them. You have a right to tell somebody about what they did. You have a right not to forgive them. You have a right to keep that thing. But you yourself, you have received forgiveness before. This is a parable using a physical truth or story to explain a spiritual reality. It's not just a story. This thing exists in the kingdom of heaven. So you must be careful what you do. And he would not. He went and threw him into the prison. Verse 31. I'm going to 35. So when his fellow servants saw what, he had, what had been done, they were very grieved. And they came and told their master, all that had been done. In verse 32, then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you, you wicked servant. Oh, I forgive you all that debt because you begged him. Verse, 30, verse 33, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servants? And just as I pitied on you, if you receive the pity and the compassion of God, wave your hands on me. So why are you holding other people? And his master was angry. Remember what he did? He delivered him to torture us until he should pay all that was due to him. So what was forgiving him, he had to go back to pay. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brothers, his treasures. Did you see that? I'm not talking about you acting from your heart. If you don't forgive people. This is a spiritual truth. And as you do that, I pray that your life will not remain the same. What are you supposed to do? Forgive yourself. Sometimes you get angry, you lose it. You let go. You, 
there's some things in your cupboard that comes out. Don't let me call it skeleton. <laughs> You've been there, you fought each other. You told a secret, she told your secret. But you're angry that you told your secret, but you forgot it that you, you ran your mouth first. Talk to me. What you do is to forgive yourself. You know, it's possible for God to forgive you and you don't forgive yourself. Most people, they find it very hard to forgive themselves. So if you can't receive forgiveness, how can you forgive someone else? But you keep on saying, no, it's me, it's me. But actually, actually, you're not forgiving that person. So learn to receive forgiveness. In Romans 5 verse 2, Romans 5 verse 2, the Bible says, let me read from this one, being justified by faith, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know who they're talking about. Through whom? Also, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So, you have to stand in grace by faith. So, the second thing after forgiving yourself, you have to stand in grace by faith. Forgiveness is received. Everything in the kingdom is done by faith. So you must access forgiveness by faith. Oh, Pastor Vedo, I just thank God that this series is not for me. I'm just listening because I have nobody to forgive. You are lying. You are lying. There's nobody, even your driver, even your, your guard, there's nobody that is truthful to themselves that will not have somebody they have to release. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not let anybody stop you. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. You must be an imitator of Jesus Christ. You must follow his steps. Number three, everyone deserves to be forgiven. Everyone. If you've been forgiven before, you, everyone deserves. We know how to make excuses for ourselves. But other people, we cast them into the prison. Everyone deserves to have a fresh start. Colossians 2.13. The Bible says you were dead because of your sins. Can you see what sins would do to people? So when you forgive people, uh, you are letting people free. You want your brother. You want your sister back. The Bible says, Joseph said, am I in the place of God? You can see that it takes God to delegate to you or to give you or to give forgiveness to people. Because the Bible says you are dead in, in your sins and because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ. For he forgave all our sins. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it on the cross. So if the devil wants to use your old file against you, tell him, no, 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 no. The original copy is on the cross. <laughs> Can somebody shout hallelujah? Many Christians don't know this. Even Christians say things like, oh, karma has caught up with that person. What are you saying? What is karma? Karma is for those who do Buddhism, not for Christians. You don't say things because you saw it. What is karma? Why is there grace? Grace doesn't mean that God is supporting you to do sin. Grace means the old thing that you've done. Oh, I committed an abortion. I had a child out of wedlock. I went to prison. It's wiped out. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away, not cover. Takes away. You don't see it again. In fact, when you are reminding God of something you have said before, God is shocked. He's thinking, when did he do it? God forgets. Like you made a boat with a paper and put it in the rain, flowing in the gutter. Do you see the boat again? God doesn't see you sin again. That's why Paul says, shall we continue in sin and expect the grace to abound? If it's that one, God doesn't remember you again. 
So I pray for you in the name of Jesus. God will give you a brand new slate and a new chalk to rewrite your life. Amen. I love verse 15 of Colossians 2. In this way, it disarms spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. The next time the enemy comes to you, tell him, Oh, I know the story. You'll be shamed on the cross. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will reign in this life of Christ Jesus. In Numbers 5, verse 23, I want to read the, the NKJV right now. Then the priest shall write these courses in a book and he shall scrape them off into the bitter water. I pray in the name of Jesus that you're seeing anything you brought here, anything you're listening to me here, that people expected, ah, in five years time, God will use it against you. It's been scraped off in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You are walking out of this broadcast, out of this program, a new person in the name of Jesus. Things that people have to say, things that people don't know anything about. I pray in the name of Jesus. Everything is being scraped off in the name of Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, not the one that covers, but the one that takes away. That's what Jesus came to do. He said, the thief has come to steal and kill and to destroy, but I came that you might have life. Maybe you are here today, you are remembering, eh, maybe, hey, anything happens, maybe God is judging me. It's not God, it's the devil. I say to you, because who's ever seen, I remit on earth is remitted. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Don't sin anymore. Amen. In uh, Psalm 55, verse 1, Psalm 50, 51, Psalm 51, verse 1, Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. It's so good they call him God. According, God is no man. <laughs> Men may be wicked. They know how to receive forgiveness, but they're wicked to their fellow brother, wicked to their fellow sister. Even those who say, oh, I've had mercy, they, are, they have wickedness in them. But I pray for you in the name of Jesus that God will turn to you and have mercy upon you. Amen. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out, it didn't say cover, blot out my transgressions. Look at verse 9, everybody. Verse 9. Verse 9. Because of time. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. I pray in the name of Jesus. One thing you will get for attending the service is that God will blot out your sin. Amen. He will give you a new beginning. Amen. Can I have a better amen? amen? There are people that react to you based on what you did last year. It doesn't matter. They, they are men. So men at their best, they're still men. But when it comes to God, that all things are naked before that we have to do. God does not remember. Not because he lost his memory, but his nature to forgive and forget. Therefore, if you are God's child, Ephesians 5 verse 1 says you must be an imitator of God. In Acts chapter 3 verse 19, and that will be my final scripture before we pray, because I want us to pray. Acts chapter 3, he said, repent therefore and be converted. Don't stay there. Now you can look at what I'm saying and say, this man is just teaching people to sin. No. That's why we have grace. Repent, therefore. This was the first uh, preaching of Peter that 3,000 people give their lives to Christ. Repent, therefore, and be converted. That your sins may be what? Blotted out. So that a time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. I pray for you. You will not only be forgiven. God will restore you. I say God will restore you. And it will save you from all unrighteousness. Amen. And a time of refreshing will come from his presence. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you've been hearing God before, you will hear God again. Amen. Anything God has been dealing with you with, it will deal with you again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will feel his presence again. Amen. Right as I'm speaking, I say there's a restoration right now. Amen. If you believe it, can I hear a better amen? Amen. God will help you. So shall it be. But the key is, let people go. Let people go. Now, I need to say this before we pray. It doesn't mean, uh, it depends on how they are. You may not 
expose them to your children again, that doesn't mean you're, you don't forgive them. You may not expose them to things or you do it bit by bit. But don't let them have to pay because God didn't let you pay. Amen. Lift up your hands. If there's anybody in your heart, release them. Now, it's not time to pray a quiet prayer. It's time to pray loud. First of all, start with thanksgiving. First of all, to start that you are not hearing this in the grief. <laughs> that you are not reminded of this. When you need forgiveness of yourself, when God has to banish you and say, no, go and pay for what I've forgiven you for before. Thank God. Appreciate him for this revelation. Thank you. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him that you are alive. Thank him, thank him that you are alive to hear this. You are not in the grave. You are not in the hospital to hear this. You are alive. Now begin to present that person or that situation to God. Not to support yourself. But release them. In the name of Jesus, release them. Remember, we stand in grace by faith. Say, Lord, I release those people. In the name of Jesus, I let go totally this morning in the name of Jesus. Come on, talk to the Lord. I let go totally this morning in the name of Jesus. Mari Baba, Kashi Tari Baba. This morning, I let go totally in the name of Jesus. Can you free your heart? Can you free your life? <laughs> Can you walk free out of this place? Can you leave your house free this morning? Now begin to talk about things the enemy has done to ravage you. Maybe sickness. Maybe cancer in your wealth. I don't know what it is. Begin to talk to the Lord that is not supposed to be. At the beginning it was not so. Therefore begin to rebuild every tree that my father has not planted. Say no to them right now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to say no. If the handwriting of ordinance has been blotted out, therefore begin to rebuke right now. Every sickness, every infirmity, any kind of karma. <laughs> begin to rebuke it. it Say it's not your portion. Begin to put out the enemy in the name of Jesus. Since it's not God, then bind it. Cast it out of your body, of your eyes, of your throat, Anywhere it is, begin to cast it out. Begin to cast it out. Anywhere the enemy has ravaged in your life. This money was designed that you should pray right now. Don't hold back. Don't think it's a general thing. Begin to pray. At home, be praying. Anything the enemy wants to use this to do or he has done in your life. Lord Jesus, I cancel it right now. There's a new beginning for me. Mashi Tari Baba. Can you pray in tongues? Can you pray in tongues? Kari Baba Baba. Karo Bako Santari Baka Shitari Baba. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Kara Baka Sintari Baba Kashitari Baba. Come on, somebody. Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Any instruction God is giving to you. Write it down. Note it down. Maybe God is talking to you personally. He's not condoling you. But he's not condemning you. You have two more minutes. Ask for a time of refreshing. Command it to come. You have a right to receive a refreshing. Refreshing. Declare that never again will I go back to where I came from. Never again will I go back to my vomit. In the name of Jesus. It's a new day.
You have one more minute. It's a new day in my life. I can't hear you. It's more serious than you're taking it. Any ladder the enemy has used to access me. In the name of Jesus, I take it out now. Talk like that. Anything in my background. Begin to pray. That is those sweet sour grapes that the teacher will set at the edge. The sin of my father, the sin of my mother's house will never be so in my life. Some of you are paying for things you're not supposed to pay for. The sin of my father's house, the sin of my mother's house is not going to be a reality in my life. In the name of Jesus. Be serious about this. Declare that you're new creation. Begin to declare that you're joined with Christ Jesus. Whoever is joined with Christ Jesus is one spirit. As he is, so am I. Anything that wants to stop me from reigning, I bind you now. Begin to declare, I'm reigning my career. I'm reigning my health. Begin to declare. No generational cause is working on me. I'm free. I'm a new creation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, we thank you for hearing these things, for knowing these things. I pray in the name of Jesus that we not remain the same. Let this service as small, as little, as brief as it is, let it cancel all our confusion. Amen. Let testimonies come out of this service. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.